Welcome to davidinstitute.org premium masterclass. One thing is very clear now, as we look and we check the way the churches are going in the world of the I, the me, myself, and I generation, it's becoming clear that churches are going to feel the shock of the AI economy. They are going to feel the shock of the outcome of what is coming down the road. Individuals are going to begin to become the center focus of churches, ministries, and all that has to do with that. We need to be very careful what we expect and what we anticipate to be the ground force of what we do. The AI is about to take people's jobs and those jobs will impact the income of churches and those income will affect the communion and the relationship that is in the churches. Unfortunately, the churches are not preparing for any of the things that's going to happen as a result of the creation of the AI. Unfortunately, it's not even clear to them to understand that the AI is not the focus, but the consequences can make the apparent look of the kingdom of darkness clear for them to see. And the implication is that the outcome of that will be that the people who are looking at the scenario will not be able to understand the, who, the action plan to take, what to do, how to do it, and how to get out of this whole complex scenarios. It's unfortunate and it is very apparent that most of them don't seem to understand what is going on. The pastors, the leaders of the church, they don't seem to understand that people are going into individual me, myself and I, creation of uh, different products, different ideologies, different things that will cater for them. The AI economy is an individual economy. It's an individual economy because it's the fulfillment of that passage of the scripture that tells us very clearly without, compre without compromising words that this is the fundamental thing that we need to do. That men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And for that reason, if you understand how this whole thing is going to work out, it will make you to look and think twice about people also going to the point of creating their own economies, even in the church, with the grace and the anointing of the Lord and the outcome they expect to participate in the light of what they are doing. The outcome now is for us to look at it and say to ourselves, what is the main purpose of what we are doing and how do we acclimatize ourselves to understand how these things function? If we understand how they function, what they are doing, and what they are supposed to do, we will be able to now know that when people become individuals who can make contents that are spiritual, spiritually impactful on their own, and be able to survive and sustain themselves on their own, it creates a very difficult scenario. The scenario of people not knowing that we should not avoid the getting together and gathering of the brethren. And some people have done that and shipwrecked their faith. And that is the end, end point of what is about to happen. People are going to wake up and discover that they don't need the churches anymore. They don't need the gathering of the brethren together. Because people want to gather with them on the social media, on the, on the platforms of the socials. And they will want to live on that kind of world. Dangerous as it may be, they will think, I'm having a relationship with somebody in America who hears me pays me for the word I have given to him and encouraged him. But the human relationship that has to do with territorial spirits and dealing with territorial and the kingdom of darkness territorially would have had a few days since the kingdom of God who are living there have not gathered together in unity to deal with the territorial spirit and where they are dwelling. Furthermore, to this particular in intention, most of the people who will now go online, produce good contents, produce prophetic contents, produce Bible study contents, produce beautiful songs, produce everything that we could have enjoyed together as a church will now want to do it on individual basis and want to get the remunerations based on that. The reward that other people who are blessed by it outside the church will give them. But the problem is, like I said, there will be no unity of purpose. The outcome will be that we will be individuals who are running the Christian race on individual basis and will not have anything to show for our journeys because it is now based on who you are interacting with on a long-term basis. The outcome of that is that we may not be able to know who 
our impact, who our impact of ministry is designed for and how it is designed and the outcome of the purpose, the area of discipleship, which is the most vital part of the Christian journey, which we have all neglected in the time past, which is now impacting the church, because that's what has made the church not to build people up and encouraging them like we are doing. And, and, and it's very important because if you're not encouraging people, if you're not building people up, not on a long distance stretch. Yes, long distance as a, as a result of what you're giving the word. But the outcome is, do you know how the person you are, uh, who is influencing you or who is helping you in your journey, how he lives? Forget about what you hear. Discipleship is about what you have seen. If you look at what Peter said, he said, what we saw on that transfiguration day, what we have touched, the same thing Paul said concerning Timothy, you have been with me, you have seen me, you have understood how I work. And it's very important that people begin to understand that we need to go back to the old time religion style of discipleship. It will make a difference to counter whatever the kingdom of darkness wants to do by creating a personal ministry that could be impactful but not effective in discipleship. That is the biggest contention the church is about to see. Thanks for listening to davidinstitute.org premium masterclass program.